because the judge's ruling is required under us law, the Securities and Exchange Commission of the United States must abide by it. And they have the option to appeal and go through all of those other procedures. But after the court says that you have a lot more options, you have a lot more possibilities. In her verdict, she only recommended that XRP is not a security in and of itself. You are in a better position, if that's okay with you. I talked about this briefly yesterday, but in my opinion, judges who have rendered verdicts against the SEC has not faithfully followed the law. This applies to both our situation and another extremely serious one. This, in my opinion, is a noteworthy improvement. Um, a highly critical court ruling stating that a U.S. government entity is not operating in compliance with the letter of the law. Furthermore, there was the grayscale ruling that was issued about a week or two ago. A unanimous panel of three judges found that the Securities and Exchange Commission was operating arbitrarily and capriciously in that particular case. The, the wording of that decision is extremely important since the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance was represented by the Bill Hahn Law Firm and he was paid $15 million to do favors for the Ethereum community. Considering that they are using terms like conspiracy and corruption, I believe that he will continue to be the focus of intense investigation. Although I am not educated on this subject, I will concede that it is an interesting story, even though I won't offer any information. Uh, Judge Analisa Torres of the Southern District of New York rendered a decision on July 13, 2023, resolving opposing motions for summary judgment in the Securities and Exchange Commission case, which was closely followed. Something like this is not going to end anytime soon in my opinion. Uh, Ripple Labs disagrees because this is the first court ruling to fully examine the question of whether a cryptocurrency is a security position that the SEC has generally taken. The SEC, you know, I think after getting the judge's decision where she very clearly said XRP in and of itself is not a security, that's the law of the land of the United States. They can appeal that, they can do all those things, but like once a judge has said that, you have way more, like you have upper hand, if you will. And I also think what's happened, and we, we talked a little about this yesterday, but the judges who have ruled against the SEC, both in our case, the judge used the expression that the SEC, and this is a quote, the SEC has not followed a faithful allegiance to the law. I mean, that is harsh. A judge saying that to a U.S. agency, they're not following a faithful allegiance to the law. That's super harsh. And then the Grayscale decision, which was a week or two ago, in that decision, the, a three-panel, three-judge panel unanimously ruled, and the, the decision there said that the SEC was being arbitrary and capricious. And that is some damning language. I, I, I do think there will continue to be a lot of attention on this guy, Bill Hinman, because he was getting paid $15 million by his law firm who was representing the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. Uh, this could have a, a big impact on how the U.S. government regulates the cryptocurrency market. The SEC has asked Judge Torres to rule on whether or not Ripple violated Section 5 of the Securities Act by participating in the unregistered offer and sale of securities in connection with its XRP trans transactions. Favors, this is in line with the Supreme Court of the United States historic decision that established a standard for identifying securities. Um, investigating the disputed transaction was a crucial step for the tribunal. The hottest states that a party is considered to have entered into an investment contract when it promises to pay another party money to participate in a joint venture with the understanding that the other party will benefit from the management's critical efforts in determining the venture's success or failure. If the agreement plan or transaction meets the criteria for an investment contract, it will be deemed a security and be governed by the rules of several state and federal securities laws. This is so because there are standards that need to be fulfilled for an investment contract to be approved. The idea that an ICO or any other method of selling tokens that reflect digital assets could be viewed as an investment contract and consequently need the issuance of securities consent decrees has not received much attention in recent years. This is a result of the lack of enthusiasm for the prospect, but more complaints and unofficial claims from the Securities and Exchange Commission have muddied the waters of the longstanding distinction between the underlying assets provided by investment contract security and those assets that were stated in an earlier warning. Uh, this divergence has existed for a very long period. The majority of coins that represent securities or digital assets are effectively treated as investment contracts when they are sold through investment contracts. According to statements made by Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Gary Gensler on numerous occasions in speeches and interviews.
This claim has been stated by Gensler in several settings. This action is consistent with recent enforcement proceedings against Bitcoin exchanges by the Securities and Exchange Commission. The Securities and Exchange Commission is attempting to create a link between the original token sale and the founders and issuing companies' continued participation in the secondary selling of those tokens on cryptocurrency exchanges, all within the framework of an ongoing investment plan under Howey. The goal of doing this is to try and make a link between the two occurrences. One proposal from both parties is the Securities Clarity Act, which was just reintroduced. The Securities Clarity Act claims that these claims and comments blurred the obvious distinction between the underlying assets sold by an investment contract, which might or might not be a security, and the security of the contract. Uh, in those complaints, this was the situation. And William Hims now famous 2018 lecture on digital asset transfers, where he introduced Hoy to Gary Plastic, a former director of the SEC Division of Corporate Finance. This disparity was further brought to light. Even if the Ripple ruling has other important details, Chair Gensler and the SEC decided to test that difference in the middle. Possessions the ability to understand the relevance of the Howey test and the difference between an investment contract and the asset that it is based on may have been the most valuable skill that how we had in the Bitcoin sector. SCRP and Orange Groves aren't considered to be secure in any way, according to Howie's return to basics. As she conducted her investigation into the cryptocurrency known as XRP, Judge Torres brought this to the attention of the audience. Selling and contributing XRP, Orange Groves, or any other asset of non-security constitutes an investment contract to a security that is based on a transaction-by-transaction -transaction analysis, which instead takes into account all of the pertinent conditions surrounding each contract transaction or scheme. An investment contract could be for anything but selling an asset, including a digital asset. Through one does not automatically make it into a security just because it is non-SAN. This is because it excludes the Howey elements seen in an investment contract to contract exchange or scheme. This is the cause of the situation. Because Judge Torres' judgment makes it very apparent that XRP, the digital currency, does not meet the requirements to be considered a security. Investors in have bought a piece of an orange grove together with a service contract that gave the cultivation, harvesting, and marketing of the crops to a third party since the digital asset XRP is similar to how his oranges grow. The net revenues would thereafter be sent to the original investors by this third party. At Ho, however, the investment arrangement was based on the complete structure, not just the orange trees. The restoration of the base might be the order's most important outcome. Emmer responded quickly. And he used the Howey transaction by transaction approach to announce the relationship to the public. Judge Torres considered all relevant facts and circumstances associated with any contract transaction or scheme before reaching his verdict. The court determined that the, the ruling was only applicable to institutional sales of XRP from three contracts, transactions, or schemes that employ the cryptocurrency to satisfy all of the requirements. Transaction by transaction, after assessing each of the institutional sales, programmatic sales, and other distributions that were part of the order. The court came to this one conclusion, bringing the programmatic sales and the other disbursements did not meet the standards to be deemed investments. The court said they failed to meet at least one of the Howey requirements, which explains why. Upon reviewing the Reviving the Constitution Act, the court has hardened several decisions that appear to be at odds with each other concerning institutional and programmatic sales. Judge Torres swiftly deleted them because he could so easily satisfy the first two of the three prongs about institutional sales. This completes the third element of the Howey method. This is because the court determined that programmatic sales did not meet the third requirement. Hence, it was deemed unnecessary to analyze the first two prongs of the requirement. The court acknowledged that buyers of XRP and both kinds of transactions had or would have expected to make a profit in evaluating the third criterion. Uh, although and these are meant to be pleasant flicks, I strongly advise viewers to do their homework and speak with experts before making any financial decisions. I value your time and would appreciate it if you could click like on the video. You should begin to receive notifications if you want to be informed. Uh, as soon as I upload new content, I hope the next video goes smoothly for you.